Hello, welcome to Kitchen Talk. Start a, Today um, we're going to a new study on uh, the book of John and we want to um, open up the scriptures to those who might not know who Yeshua, Jesus, is and um, new believers and I think that um, the book of John is one of the easiest to understand when first coming to know about the Messiah and your Savior. So we're going to study the book of John today. We're going to try to cover as much of uh, chapter one as possible. And uh, I'm very excited because it's uh, September 21st and the new moon was spotted in Jerusalem. Therefore, starting this evening, it is the Feast of Trumpets. And uh, then in 10 days, the Feast of Atonement. Five days after that, it starts the Feast of Sukkot, which is um, Feast of Tabernacles. So I'm excited. We're fixing to enter into a feast season, and that's always a blessing. So grab you a cup of coffee, and let's get started. I have copy and pasted um, an easy-to-read version of uh, John chapter 1 along with some links. Okay, so we're going to open up our Bibles to um, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And I've made some notes, and um, some of the terms that I'm going to use are Hebrew terms, um, only because Yeshua was a Jew, and he more than likely spoke Hebrew. And um, Yehovah God told us his name, and that's in Hebrew. So I want to touch on that. And I'll put a little link in uh, this video for um, those uh, to see the latest evidence on the pronunciation of um, Yehovah's name by Nehemia Gordon. Really good stuff. And uh, all the way up till just a few weeks ago, he's found uh, scripture in the <clears throat> text, the ancient text, with the vowel points that tell you exactly how to pronounce his name. Okay, Let so let's get started. Here. All right. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim. Elohim is the term for God. Um, and the word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehend, comprehended it not. So darkness couldn't even understand the light of his word. Now, uh, there's a Hebrew teaching. It's not scripture, but... It's kind of a nice thought that the entire Torah or first five books of the Bible um, in the Old Testament is one continuous name of Yehovah. So it's like unpronounceable to us, but he gave us the name to call him for all generations. And we'll touch on that in a minute. Okay. So. There was a man sent from Yehovah, whose name was Yochanan or John. We know him as John the Baptist. The same came for a witness, uh, to bear witness of the light. Now, this is the light that was just spoken of back up in uh, verse 5, that the light shines in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. Okay. That all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the, that light. So, John the Baptist, who was actually uh, Yeshua, Jesus, his cousin, um, because we know that in another gospel, I think the Gospel of Luke, it talks about when Mary uh, became pregnant 
because the Spirit of the Lord descended upon her and she had Yeshua in her stomach, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was pregnant with John. And she was six months pregnant. So we happen to know that he was born, um, let's see, three, six months before Yeshua was. So they were actually cousins. Okay. But John did not know that Yeshua, his cousin, was Messiah. But it's coming up. The Lord's going to reveal it to him. Okay. So let's back up to nine again. That was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as receive him, to them he gives the power to become the sons of Jehovah even to them that believe on his name, which are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of Jehovah. And the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the Yaqid. Yaqid, it would be in your Bible, begotten or beloved of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yaka'id is more than just um, a son. It's a begotten, beloved. It's his only. It uh, actually means um, in Strong's uh, H3173, which is a good uh, companion to your Bible. Strong's takes the English words that have been transliterated or translated from the Hebrew or the Greek and they give you they take you back to that original language and it gives you the meaning and um, everything that that encompasses it, it, it really enriches the word for you well the Yaqid, um and I don't know that I'm pronouncing this correctly but I'm attempting is the only begotten um, it means um, irreplaceable, beloved heir. Uh, the same word was used when Abraham was told to take his son, his Yachid, to the mountain and sacrifice him in the Old Testament. He wound up not having to do that, but that was his only beloved son, and he waited a hundred years almost to get him. So he was... It was truly a lot to ask. Well, here's the Son of God, or Yehovah, that's come into the world. It's the light of the world. He came to his people. His people would be Israel and the Jews. Now, all the and feasts they did. and um, the celebrations that the Lord had commanded that they keep all pointed them. There are seven of them, and they all pointed each one to a different aspect of Messiah. These were commemorating literal events, but they were also shadows and types of glimpses of his son, Yeshua, who was when coming. When Messiah, Messiah came, the Hamashiach, the Messiah, not any Messiah, the Messiah, sent from Yehovah, his only son, the Jews didn't recognize him. They didn't know who he was. And um, I'm sure that broke his heart because he had been wanting them to prepare for it for thousands of years. So, moving on. Yochanan, John the Baptist, uh, bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before okay, me. Okay, so the scripture says that he um, was made flesh, and he came, and he tabernacled with us. Well, it just so happens, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, that we're fixing to enter into the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a time when Jehovah has asked us to go and spend seven days out in the wilderness living in temporary shelters. And um, the 
Jews don't know why they do these feasts, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Blowing, and um, they do know atonement, uh, and, and but they don't understand the fullness of the Feast of Tabernacles because Yeshua Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He was part his father God and part Mary. And so he became flesh and dwelt here with us, tabernacled with us. And it was such an event, something so wonderful and so special that Jehovah wanted us to celebrate it every year. And the fact that in the future, this same Yeshua, his Yakahad, beloved son, is going to come back. And that's where we talk about when you hear people talk about um, prophecy and what's going to happen in the future. Um, it's the return of Yeshua, uh, Jesus, Yehovah's son. And he will tabernacle with us again for a thousand years. We're going to be with him. And so that's something wonderful to look forward to. So those are the kind of things that we as Christians and believers in Yeshua bring to these feasts that some refer to as the Jewish feasts, but God refi refers to them as his feasts, the feast of the Lord, or the feast of Yehovah. Or we'll okay. go back to 14. And the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the Yochid of the Father, full of grace and truth, the beloved, the only, the only begotten son of Jehovah. Yochanan, or John the Baptist, bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that, can't, that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So, the Bible just told us that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it said later on that that Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, what he's saying here, what John is saying here is that there's one coming that, he, even though he came after me, because John was born first, he is preferred before me, because he was before me. In other words... He knows that this is going to be the Messiah, the Son of God, who um, was present at the creation of everything. So this is God's Son that's coming, and he's preparing the way. Okay, moving on. Verse 16. And of his fullness have all ye received, and grace for grace. For the Torah, Torah is the first five books of the Bible, of the Old Testament, was given through Moshe, Moses. Um, grace and truth came from Yeshua HaMashiach. Big word. Yeshua is Jesus' Hebrew name. When his mom would call out the window or the front door for him to come to dinner, he didn't say, Yo, Jesus, it's time for dinner. He would say, Yahoshua or Yeshua. And HaMashiach is the Messiah. The meaning a particular, specific, the only Messiah, the Messiah of Messiahs. Okay, so Jesus is known in, to Christians, but his name is uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Messiah. So okay. he's giving you ident the identification of him. No man has seen Yah. Yah is a short uh, version for Yehovah God's name. Instead of saying Yahovah, you say you can say Yah. And most names for like Israel and for the people in Israel have Yah somewhere in them, meaning they belong to Him. Okay, so instead of some people would say God here, it's we say Yah. Okay, so, so, picking up again in 18, no man has seen Yah at any time. The Yahid, or beloved, the only begotten son, which 
is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. And this is the record of Yochanan, or John the Baptist, when the Yehudim, Judah, or um, the Jews, Yehudim, is uh, the Hebrew name for the Jewish people. So when the Yehudim uh, had sent priests and Levarim from Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, to ask him, who are you? This man that's one crying in the wilderness, making uh, straight the path for the Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua means God saves or Yehovah saves, Yah saves. He is our salvation. So his son's name was that God saves. How beautiful is that? So here um, they're saying, who are you? And, you know, by what authority do you come? The Pharisim and the Levites or Leviim, they um, were the authority, the church, the church leaders, kind of like the preachers and deacons that you see in churches today. That's who they were. And um, they inquired, you know, who are you to be out here preaching? And, you know, who sent you? What are you about? So he's fixing to tell them uh, to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not Hamashiach. Let's get this clear right from the start in the very beginning. I'm not the Messiah. So if that's who you're looking for, you know, or you think that that's who I'm claiming to be, I'm not. Okay. And they asked him, what then? Are you Eliyahu or Elijah? Elijah was a prophet in the Old Testament. The book of Micah uh, prophesied that um, he would return in, in the, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, which is the day of judgment, when we will all stand before the Father. And if we don't have the blood of the Son, the perfect, perfect, only perfect person, if we don't have his blood on the doorpost of our hearts and our life, so um, we won't be saved. He is our salvation. When we stand in judgment, we'll know the fullness of that salvation. I mean, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you're saved at that moment. But you won't understand the fullness of that until you're standing before the most holy of holies, the God of all creation, of Abraham, Isaac, the person and, and God that this entire Bible is talking about. You won't understand the fullness of that salvation that he's brought to you until you're standing in front of him and he's showing you the sins of your life. And it's all playing before you. You will have no excuse. You, you, you will make no reason. You will fall down as dead, I'm sure, as many people did in, in scripture. But if we have the blood of Yeshua or the faith in Jesus, his son, his Yahyad, then we're saved. We receive grace even though we've sinned. Now, that doesn't give us a right to sin. doesn't mean we can go out and sin. It means that we've tried our best and we were stuck in these human bodies. And while in these human <sighs> bodies, they failed us at times. We try, we strive, and um, we we gain power through just the name of Yeshua and Yehovah, calling on them to help us in our weakness. But we do fail because we're human, and he, you know, he's going to show us our failures, and <laughs> then we're going to uh, understand the grace we've been given and how we deserved to die. But we aren't going to be put to death. We're going to get to live with Yeshua. Okay. And they said to him, well, who are you? Um, are you Eliyahu or Elijah? And he said, I am not. And they said, are you that prophet? Okay, so I learned something today. That prophet. Who is that prophet? Like, it was as if everybody would know that prophet. Well, it just so happens that 
that prophet, to. Um, a prophet from Deuteronomy 18:15, in which uh, this is what the Lord Yahovah told Moses. Um, he said, Yahovah, thy God, shall rise up a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, uh, unto him ye shall hearken. So he's talking about the last days. There will be a prophet. He doesn't name him, but he says he'll be like him. And he will be um, come from you, from, from the midst of you. And unto him you shall hearken. So there's that prophet. That was a learning for me because I didn't know that there was a specific scripture that dealt with that. But there is. So are you that prophet? And he answered, no. Then said they unto him, who are you that we may give answer to them that sent us? What say you about yourself? Uh, he said, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Jehovah, as said the prophet Yeshiyahu, or Isaiah. And they which were uh, sent were of the Pharisee, which is the, in, in the Bible it says the Pharisees. Uh, and they asked him and said unto him, Why? Immerse you then, if you are not that Hamashiach, nor Eliyahu, Elijah, uh, neither that prophet. If you're not any of these three, then what are you doing out here immersing people or baptizing? They called it mikvah. Yehokanan answered them, saying, I immerse with water, but there stands one among you, whom ye know not he it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoes latch it i am not worthy to unloose these things were done in bet avara or bethshara uh, beyond the jordan uh, where yokanan was immersing so in the jordan would be in your scripture and so it, it's kind of interesting there's a there's a passage that stands out there because he's talking to remember the leaders of the the church and um, he's saying to them there's one that stands among you in other words a priest um, one holy that that would stand a Pharisee meant someone who was separated, to be separated from. But the Pharisees, in their eagerness to be holy and separated from the world, came up with their own laws because uh, they thought that would help protect them. But God had already given them the law through the Ten Commandments and different things like that. And he told them what they needed to do to be separate. But that wasn't good enough for them. So... Their sin was they became haughty and placed themselves and their teachings and their laws above God's law. Well, and here um, he's saying, there's one that stands among you or is equal to you, a separated one like you are, a priest, a holy one, and you don't even know him. And that's who I'm here to proclaim and make straight the way. And it's true because Yeshua was about to make his uh, presence known on the earth. And um, when he does, these very ones that he was a part of, that they should have known him and been the most intimate with, didn't recognize him at all. And then led to his persecution and death. But with the resurrection, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next day, Yochanan sees Yeshua coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of Yehovah. 
Now, this is the Annunciation of the Hamashiach, the Messiah they've been waiting thousands of years to see. And his introduction, I think, is so profound because he says, Behold the Lamb of Yehovah. Yehovah is the God that they worship, creator of everything. And he's calling his son, this holy Hamashiach, the Messiah, a lamb. Well, what is the purpose of a lamb in their faith? Well, lamb was something sacrificed and the blood was used as atonement for sin. And so he announces from the very first moment that Yeshua opens his ministry and is, is proclaimed to the world, this is the Lamb of God. And every Jew that was there would understand exactly what that meant because they knew what the Lamb was for. They had to get the Lamb. They had to get their best Lamb, an unblemished Lamb, um, perfect, uh, a certain age, and bring it to the temple. And then the temple would slaughter it. And its blood would be uh, poured out for the remission of their sins. And they had to do this every Passover. So when he announces him as the Lamb of Yehovah, it's like, okay, Yehovah's Lamb that he is bringing to the temple for the remission of all of your sins. But they don't know that yet. But I think it's very interesting that the very first thing we hear about Yehovah's Son, Yeshua, is that he was the Lamb. He was the one to be um, killed and sacrificed and his blood spilt for sin okay so let's go on behold the lamb of Jehovah, which takes away the sins of the world this is he of whom i said after me comes a man which is preferred before me for he was before me in other words he's referring back to that first part of john which said that in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the word became flesh and dwelt among us so he was there in the beginning he was before john even though on earth he came six months after him okay uh and i knew him and i knew him not but that he should be made manifest to israel therefore am i coming I come immersing with water. And Yochanan bore record saying, I saw the Ruach descending from heaven like a dove. Now yours might say the spirit, um, but the Ruach is the breath, the wind, or the spirit of Yehovah. It's a specific thing. And it's also the thing that Yeshua said that he was going to leave here with us. The Ruach HaKodesh. Lord. this holy breath this holy breath descended or this holy wind descended uh, onto Yeshua in his baptism like a dove or as into a dove and it abode with him in other words it stayed there it didn't just descend upon him and you know be with him for a few minutes and then leave this holy breath this holy anointing this um Ruach of Yehovah stayed with him. And the same is he which immerses with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of Yehovah. And I saw and bore record that this is the son of Elohim, or the son of Yehovah. Elohim was a generic name for God. And, uh, they were saying that he he bears witness to the fact this is his son. This is Yehovah's son. Again, the next day, after Yochanan and two of his uh, Tamadim, Tamadim are disciples, uh, and looking upon Yeshua as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of Yehovah. Again, the second time he announces him, Behold, the Lamb of of Yehovah. This is the sacrifice. This Yeshua, whose name means God or Yehovah saves, his sole purpose for coming to the earth 
was to proclaim the glory of his father and the love of his father and to be the remission or the sacrifice for our sins. Everything we've ever done that was against the way God wanted us to live and commanded us to live, he came to be sacrificed instead of you, that you wouldn't have to die. He said, I will take this on myself. This is this is my son, the only son I'll ever have, and I'm going to send him to earth, and you're going to sacrifice him, and he will take away the sin of the world. If you believe that he did this, and if you believe that he died, and if you believe he was raised again, and as Revelation 12 says, and if you believe in the, uh, in the name of Yeshua and keep the commandments of Yehovah or keep the commandments of the Lord. He gave us some commandments, 10 of them that we know of for sure. And he gave us festivals that he wanted to meet with us and be with us. And these things were commanded that we keep. So he's saying those who keep these and believe in the death, the resurrection of Yeshua, they will be saved. And that was his purpose. So here, the second time he's introduced to all the people in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he uh, he's the Lamb of Yehovah. So, behold the Lamb of Yehovah. And the two uh, Talmudim, or disciples, heard him speak this, and they followed Yeshua. Then Yeshua turned, and he saw them following, and he said unto them, what seek ye? Now, there are the first words of our Messiah to his people, because these people wanted to follow him. And he says, what seek ye? What are you looking for? And he says that to each and every one of us when we come to that place of salvation. What are you looking for? Are you looking for salvation? Are you looking for a quick fix because you sinned and you don't want to pay the price for it? Move on. Are you looking for the answer to salvation, true salvation, the glory of the Lord that surpasses all understanding, that darkness can't even comprehend? Each of us are faced with that question. What are you seeking? If you're just looking for quick fixes and uh, magical spells, <laughs> like you see on Facebook all the time when people say, pray this or do this and pass it on to a thousand people and you'll be blessed. And that isn't, are you looking for the true creator, the one who created everything and then who holds the key to your happiness and your salvation when you stand before his father and his father is judging you? Are you looking for that, the Lord and master of this earth? And if you are, you found him. So, moving on. He says, what seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which the interpretation means master, where do you dwell? And he said unto them, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two, which heard uh, Yaakov, Yochanan, uh speak and followed him was Andrea or Andrew, uh, the brother of Shimon, Simon, uh, and says unto him, We found Hamashiach. And he brought him to Yeshua. Then Yeshua beheld him and said, You are Shimon, the son of Yona or Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Kepha, Kepha, which means rock. Uh, and the day following, Yeshua would go forth to Galilee, or Galilee, and find Philip and say unto him, follow me. That's what he says to each of us. Follow me, follow in my footsteps, follow my example. He kept the commandments, he kept the feasts, he loved his father. He knew there was a right and a wrong and a, and a way to live in this world. 
but to be apart from it at the same time, different. And he said, follow me. Let me show you a better way. Let me show you the truth and not the church who wants to put their own rules and their own regulations. That has, doesn't have anything to do with this. This has to do with a personal relationship with you and the creator of the world. He wants to know you intimately and he wants you to know him intimately. Most important. Okay. And Philip was from Bet Sead and the city of Andrew and Kepha. And Philip finds Nathaniel and says unto him, We have found him of whom Moshe or Moses uh, in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the Old Testament, and the prophets, all the prophets like Isaiah, Elisha, Elisha did write. Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Yosef. And Nathanael said unto them, Can there be any good thing that come out of Nazareth? First dis, okay? Nazareth was kind of like um, the other side of the tracks, the wrong side of the tracks. So Yeshua wasn't born into a kingdom. He wasn't born into um, a wealthy family. He wasn't born... Um, into nobility he was born on what we would call today the wrong side of the tracks and, they, and then here Nathaniel's saying is there anything good that comes out of Nazareth you know of this Nazareth Nazareth is like a dump and to this day it still is because we just visited there this year and well that's another story okay Philip said unto him come and see Yeshua saw Nathanael coming to him, and he said unto him, Behold, Yisraeli, or you are an Is, uh, Israelite, of Israelites indeed, in whom there is no guile. And Nathanael said unto him, From whence do you know me? Uh, Yeshua answered him and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi or master, you are the son of Elohim. Now, all he said to him was, before Philip came and got you, I saw you sitting under the fig tree. Why did that make him know he was God? Because he was probably praying there. He was went off and found a space, a quiet place to sit and pray. And in his prayers, it was Yeshua and Yeshua's father that he was praying to. So he said, I know you from there. That opened his eyes like, oh my goodness, you are, you, you, you're you him. Okay. So to wrap up this You are chapter, the king of Yisrael. Yeah, Yeshua answered and said unto him, because I said unto you that I saw you under the fig tree, you believe? Well, you shall see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Amen, Amen, or Amen. I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of Jehovah ascending and descending upon the son of Adam, or the son of man. Adam means man, or mankind. Okay, so to close with, I wanted to share this um, one thing, and I'm going to put up graphics that, that depict it. But um, the Father's name, Yehovah, I'm going to put a link to that. And in Paleo Hebrew, which was the kind of like picture writing that they had before uh, he regular Hebrew uh, letters, it shows you the meaning each each word has its own, i mean each letter has its own meaning or each pictograph and it draws you a picture of of what this name means so jehovah's name the meaning of that name from right to left it reads hand behold nail behold is his son's life he beheld the nail. His arms, his hands were stretched out and he beheld 
the new for you and for me. How beautiful. And his name, Yeshua, his son, his son's name means Yehovah saves. Yah saves. It was from the very beginning in Genesis, all the way back in Genesis. I wrote the scripture down. So all the way in, in the very beginning when um, God made his name known, he said to the Israelites in Exodus um, 13 through 15, and he says um, to the Israelites, Yehovah, the God of your father, he says, who, you know, Moses wants to know who he is. And he says, uh, say to the Israelites, Yehovah, the God of your fathers, God, the God of uh, Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. So clearly he wanted his name, the specific name that he gave them, to be known through all generations. Yet, the Christians have changed in your Bible that name, Yehovah, which would be the symbols YHVH, uh, changed it to all capitals L O R D. Lord and God are titles. It's like you can be a Lord uh, of the manor, you know, it's, it's a title that you're given. It is not a name, a personal name. Yehovah wanted each of us to know his name intimately. He knows our name and he wanted us to know him. So nobody could trick us into who is the, who is God? Who is Yehovah? Who is the creator? The God of Isaac and of Abraham and of uh, Jacob. Who is this? And he said, this is my name and you shall call it for all generations. Every generation is to know this name. But Israel stopped using it. They said it, they didn't want, uh, originally they didn't want the Babylonians when they were taken away to know the name of God and defame it. Well, then after so many years of being there, people just didn't remember how to say it. So if they weren't exactly sure how to say it, they decided they weren't going to say it. And so uh, this rabbi, um, who somebody who was trained training to be a rabbi, Nehemiah Gordon, he um, was a scholar, Jewish scholar, in our day, and he uh, researches manuscripts of scripture. He worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls and other things. And um, he has found several manuscripts that have all the vowel points um, over the name to tell you exactly how to say it. And the proper way is Yahovah. Yahovah. So his name is written or almost 7,000 times in scripture. He wanted it known. He didn't want it hidden because if you hide his name and you just call him God, which is can be for any God, then you can worship Buddha or whoever because you haven't given him a name. He's just a God. This is a personal God who created everything and wants you to know exactly who he is personally and that his name meant the very thing he was sending his son here to do on this earth. It's so beautiful. He loves us and his son loved us. So we'll get into chapter two uh, next week. And I hope this was informative and not overwhelming. Um, I prayed before we started. And I pray again that Yehovah would just bless these uh, words and this video and that he would bless the lives of those that watch it. And a special hello out there to Darla. In Yeshua's name, amen.